hello today i will be teaching political reorganization and military reforms in meiji japan the meiji restoration is an important event in the history of japan the restoration of the young emperor meiji in 1867-68 was little more than a coup d'etat the leaders of the new meiji government in 1868 were thrilled at the ease and speed with which they overcome the Tokugawa shogunate the first dramatic step was to abolish all daimyo domains thus dismantling a political order in place for 260 years by 1860 almost immediately after the restoration coup top leaders of the new provincial government such as kido koen of chosu and saigo takamori of satsuma decided that the politically fragmented system of domain have to be overhauled they acted with a careful tactics and reached their goals in just 3 years they moved towards an integrated national polity however if we see this situation of 1868 in many aspect political economic social and cultural of that of just a decade later the changes are breathtaking and fully merit the term revolution of course no society ever totally serves itself from its past and japan was no exception The revolution that began in 1860 was a Japanese variation of a global theme of modern revolution. Changes took place in societies around the world in the 19th and 20th centuries, also unfolded in Japan, although sharing much. With a global history of modernizing societies, The Japanese Revolution did take place through a process that differed from the revolution from Europe. In Japan of the Meiji era, it was the members of the elite of the old regime, the samurai, who spearheaded the attack on the old order. Their role had led many historians to describe Japan in the 19th century as undergoing a revolution from above. or an aristocratic revolution the new government convinced key daimyo of prestige and power especially those of satsuma chosu tosha and hijin to voluntarily surrender their lands back to the emperor the major restoration nevertheless wrote the new japanese history nevertheless the return of the land established the principle that all lands and people were subject to the emperor's rule in 1870 the daimyo had formally returned all the lands and were taken appointment as governors of the domains but they retained significant autonomy as they were in the past the meiji reformers pressed the daimyo to appoint men of talent and often modest rank to key administrative post having bought of the potential opposition leaders and built support to key domains with these measures the government in august 1871 had the emperor announce that all domains were immediately abolished they were replaced with prefectures those governors were appointed from the center many castles were dismantled within 3 months of the number of political units were consolidated dramatically from 280 to 72 the central government would now collect taxes from the domain land most of the new governors were not former daimyos they were middling samurai from the insurgent domains now controlling the government the daimyos were granted permanent yearly salaries equivalent to the roughly 10% of their former domains annual tax revenue daimyos were simultaneously relieved of all cost of governing the meiji leaders had to erect a new national political structure to govern these domains turn prefectures 
so it seems that domain had turned to prefectures previously it was known as domain but after the restoration it became prefectures for several years they grouped in this direction experimenting with confusing variety of political forms in early 1868 the satsu rebel and the court official placed themselves atop all provincial government to rule in the name of the emperor left and right further subdivided into various functional ministries this format proved relatively effective it persisted until 1886-1885 when the Meiji leaders inaugurated a cabinet system modeled on European lines. At the head of the government was the prime minister. He presided over a cabinet that ran the bureaucratic agency, the several ministries of the Japanese state. The, this structure was codified in the Meiji constitution of 1889. Although this constitution provided a deliberative assembly, the Diet, the state ministries were responsible not to the Diet but to the Emperor. In the early Meiji years, the ministerial staff was recruited mainly by the personal connections from the rulers of Satsuma and Chosu Samurai and their allies. But the government rather quickly moved towards a more impersonal, merit-based mode of recruitment. In 1887, it began the system of civil service. So civil service examination began in Meiji Japan in 1887. From this point on performance on this exam became the primary qualification for service in prestigious ranks of the ministries of Japanese imperial state. The creation of this bureaucratic state was a step of great importance in the history of modern Japan. The Meiji rulers inherited Tokugawa legacy of bureaucratic rule by civilized samurai. They extended its reach by eliminating domains. They deepened its reach by replacing the clumsy Tokugawa administrative machinery of overlapping jurisdiction with functional ministries with clearly defined responsibilities. So there were different ministries were began during this period. They bolstered its legitimacy by putting the meritocratic ideas of Tokugawa system into practice. They elevated its prestige by defining the bureaucratic machine as one of the service to the emperor they gave the state a great legitimacy and power than it had ever given in the history of Japan. Now we see that uh, during the Meiji Restoration, a great changes took place in the history of Japan. In the political sphere, the emperor became the soul in the administrative system and there were ministries running the whole administration. The power of the daimos were curtailed and uh, there was a civil service was uh, started and through the civil service examination the bureaucratic appointments were done so uh, they moved towards a very modern Japan which ultimately led to uh, become Japan a great power in Asian politics. <music> Now regarding the military reforms of Meiji Japan, I would like to see that the, in the military reform there was a conscript army's concept started during this period. Even before the samurai were fully disposed, the Meiji leaders decided they had to renovate the military from the bottom up. Kido, Yamagata, Aritoma, Omura argued forcefully for conscript army. In October 1869, a group of samurai in Kyoto outraged at the conscript proposal and they assassinated Oba Omara. The Satsuma feared arming ignorant and potentiality of the rebellious commoners. 
they wanted to ensure a major role for samurai in the new Meiji order. In April 1871, the government created an imperial army of just under 10,000 and samurai recruited from the restoration forces. The conservative military leaders seemed to be in control, but their ascendancy was short-lived. Yamagata returned from Europe and had the concept of mass conscription and was not only to build a military strength but also to discipline the royal populace. The government decreed a system of universal conscription. Beginning at the age of 20, all males were obligated to give three years of active service in the military and four years of service of status service. In Japan and elsewhere, a patriotic spirit that would induce willingly military service, a key element of modern nationalism. The 1873 degree noted several exemptions for household heads, criminals, physically unfit students and teachers in many prescribed schools and government officials. It also allowed people to buy their way out for a huge fee of 270 yen. This sum represented more than the annual wage of common laborer. Large number of people sought to qualify for exemption or somehow scrap together to buy fee. The army had trouble meeting the quotas for what the government itself labeled a blood tax. In 1873-74, angry crowds attacked and destroyed numerous registration centers in 16 riots. Nearly 1 lakh people were arrested and punished. As this resistance makes clear, the strong discipline and fierce loyalty shown by the Japanese soldiers in later decades were by no means timeless traditional elements of Japan national character. Such resistance also plays in Europe and in the, in the United States, where large anti-draft riots erupted during the Civil War. In Japan, as elsewhere, a patriotic spirit that would induce willingly military service, a key element of modern nationalism, had to be drummed into the masses of people over several decades. Japan's army passed its first major test when it put down a large samurai rebellion in 1877. An imperial rescript of 1882 addressed the soldiers and sailors enjoining youngs to serve the emperor with loyalty and valor. The navy was built in 1880 and 1890s. By mid-1890, Japan's military was strong enough to move from the talk of keeping order at home to that of imposing its will overseas. Military service came to be accepted by the society and it was a sign of patriotism in Japan. Therefore, it seems that Japanese military organization had a new form and a new obligation during the Meiji period. The Meiji rulers tried their best to reorganize the military system they tried their best to reorganize the political system so that Japan could move towards a modern era. To summarize the political and military reform of Meiji Japan, it seems that Meiji Restoration was an important phase in the history of modern Japan. The restoration of the young emperor Meiji in 1867-68 was an important episode in the history of Japan. The Meiji restoration overthrew the Tokugawa shogunate and the new Meiji government was established. The power of the prime minister became the sole authority in Meiji Japan. The emperor was became very important. New cabinet system of government was formed. So the Meiji leaders uh, always wanted to follow the European lines or they wanted to follow the Western lines. 
because they wanted to adapt all the goodness of the West to modernize Japan. At the head of the government was the Prime Minister. He presided over a cabinet that ran the bureaucratic agencies. Several ministries were formed to administer Japan. This structure was codified in the Meiji Constitution of 1889. The year 1889 was very important because during this year, the Meiji Constitution was formed. Although this constitution provided for a deliberatively assembly, the Diet, the state ministries were responsible not to the Diet, but they were responsible to the Meiji Emperor. So the power of the Meiji Emperor was great. He was the only and all that administered modern Japan. Though the Diet had an important function, but still all the ministers were accountable for their, all their activities to the emperor. In the early Meiji years, the ministerial staff were recruited by personal connections. So there was a personal recruitment policy during the early Meiji period. The civil service examination was introduced and there was an overall development in Meiji Japan. So with the downfall of the Tokugawa shogunate, and with the Meiji Restoration, a new era of administrative bureaucratic system started in modern Japan. And this new era brought about great changes, not only in the political sphere, but also in the social, economic, educational, cultural structure of modern Japan, which gave Meiji Japan a new form of administrative structure. It not only gave Meiji Japan a new form of administrative structure, it brought about changes in the overall changes in the whole Japanese society. On the other hand, it seems that the military system was also restructured during Meiji period. The Meiji leaders wanted to bring about a great change in the military system of Japan they wanted to renovate the military from the bottom up. The Japanese leaders like Kido, Yamagata, Omura argued forcefully for a conscript army. In October 1869, a group of samurai in Kyoto outraged at the conscript proposal assassinated Omura. The Satsuma feared arming ignorant and potentially rebellious commoners. They wanted to ensure a major role for samurai in the new Meiji order. In April 1871, the government created the Imperial Army of Japan. From this point of view, the samurai were recruited in the army and recruitment was also done from the restoration forces. The government decreed a system of universal conscription. Beginning at the age of 20, all men were obligated to give three years of active service and four years of reserve status. In Japan, elsewhere, a patriotic spirit that would induce willing military service, a key element of modern nationalism. So, during the Meiji period, the the imperial army was formed and the concept of mass conscription was very much given importance. Leaders were speaking for mass conscription and to serve the army became a sign or symbol of patriotism in Meiji Japan. The navy was also formed in 1880s and 90s. By the mid 1890s, the Japan's military became very strong. Therefore, we see that during the Meiji period, not only political restructuring was done in Japan, the military restructuring went on in modern Japan. The political restructuring helped Japan to build up a bureaucratic system of government, which was very important for building a modern nation. On the other hand, the military restructuring was given importance 
which ultimately led to the formation of an imperial army strong enough to militarize the whole Japanese military system. So it seemed that Meiji Restoration brought about political reorganization and military reform in modern Japan. Thank you.